All right, what's up, guys? Peter Jaguars here again. The road to Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas is on. Well, Calvin Ridley and my Jags just missed out on securing a playoff berth. Have to figure that'll be there in spirit come time of the big game. For the 10th consecutive year, the longest standing one of these series on YouTube, we predict the entire NFL playoff bracket. Did it perfect back in 2017, aiming for the same again here in 2024. And by the way, been making plays on and off this channel. Hopped in the transfer portal after graduating from Stanford, played a season of college football. Here's a taste of me at wide receiver right here. And you know it now. Go Sage Hens, baby! You guys can let me know in the comments section what NFL receiver I remind you of, and I'll get back to the main objective right now, which is picking a Super Bowl champion. We start our journey in the AFC wildcard round. Top left, Browns at Texans. What a turnaround in just a year it has been for D'Amico Ryans. And CJ Stroud looks like the real deal. Have to think the AFC South is going to be a lot of fun in years to come. On the other side... Joe Flacco is playing with absolutely nothing to lose. This is still a superb Browns defense. Think they're going to have the coach of the year in Kevin Stefanski. And I'm taking Cleveland and the Road Dogs to get the victory. The number six seed Dolphins travel to Arrowhead in what could be freezing temperatures to take on the Chiefs. And I could give you a CBS receipt length list of injuries on the Dolphins right now. Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips already out. Andrew Van Ginkle banged up in the final game of the regular season. On the offensive side of the ball, guys in and out and just don't know that the Dolphins have the firepower that they carried at the beginning of the season. Only beat one team with a winning record all year. I'm going to push forward Kansas City with a home victory. It's almost to the point where I feel like we should throw out logic when evaluating Mike Tomlin's teams. This is the game in the first round I feel most confident about on paper, but if you told me the Bills would outgain the Steelers by 250 yards and still lose because of a blocked punt, a couple fluky Josh Allen turnovers, and some poor clock management, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So I'm taking the Bills here, but let it be known, Steelers fans, that I have quite a lot of respect for what your organization does on a yearly basis. On to the NFC, where we have two teams heading in opposite directions. The Eagles have lost five of their last six games. The Bucks have won five of their last six. And what Tampa Bay has done to go all in, get a Super Bowl with Brady, and then quickly turn the page with limited resources and still be relatively competitive, even in a weaker division, is quite impressive. For Philadelphia, it's all trying to stop the bleeding, and... I really could see this one totally going off the rails, and it, it could get even worse. At the same time, they still have the dudes on offense, and I feel like this coaching staff knows that they very well may have their jobs on the line. I think that Philadelphia is going to pull it together for one more 60 minutes of football and get this one out as a five. The storylines for this one write themselves. Matthew Stafford going back into Detroit as the Lions host their first playoff game in 30 years. You know the drill. But the unique angle that I'm thinking about is a little bit of a rest asymmetry here. Dan Campbell plays his guys all the way in Week 18, loses Sam Laporte to injury. On the other side, Sean McVay holds out key players. Stafford, Kyron Williams, Cooper Cup, all able to get healthy and as fresh as possible. I think that's going to give the Rams just a little bit more juice right here. They do have to travel on the road, expecting a great game. I feel like McVay is going to dial up the game of all games. Stafford's going to play lights out, and the Rams pull out the upset in a challenging environment. Interpretation of a lineman confirming his eligibility notwithstanding, the Cowboys went undefeated at home this season, and there's perhaps no team more grateful to be playing in a dome in January rather than if you flip this one around and they were heading to Lambeau Field. At the same time, the warm confines of AT&T Stadium also benefit Jordan Love in the Packers passing offense, these young skill position guys that he's really ahead of schedule gelling with. And the question is whether Green Bay can push to that next level just yet. think they're not quite ready for the big time right now, but I would expect to see more of the Packers in the future. For today, it's Dallas moving on. If you feel like something looks off right now, you have the correct intuition. The way I have this lined up, the Rams are the lowest remaining seed, so they will go and play at San Francisco and will have Philly Dallas as we hop into the divisional round, which now has a fitting name. The Ravens right now are what you would call hot. 
Ignoring the final game where they were resting key players, the run-in looks like wins over the Rams, Jags, Niners by 14 points, Dolphins 56-19, and the only thing that might be able to stop this buzzsaw, the team that last beat them, again ignoring that final game, is this very Cleveland Browns squad. And I'm going to declare this year that I get a ghost bracket in my second one. It's not going to go on here, but just to put it out there. And it's the Browns going all the way. Joe Flacco leads them to the Super Bowl. That's what I want to put out there. At the same time, pretty hard to bet against the guy who's going to deservedly be the MVP in Lamar Jackson. I think if we flip coins a number of times, we're going to get a more reliable Lamar, especially off the rest right here. Taking the Ravens to go forward, but just keep in mind, depending on how the dominoes fall, this Browns team could be quite frisky. Fun fact, Patrick Mahomes has never won a road playoff game in his career. Yeah, he's never played one, but it's still another accolade to chase. And look, from being on the playing side over the last few months, I think the mental aspect of football is all the more salient for me right now. Last year, the Chiefs were on a mission. They were on a mission to defend the allegations of their stadium being Burrowhead, to get the Bengals back, to prove to the league that their offense was a juggernaut that didn't just rely on Tyree Kill. And they did that. But where do you go from there? And it feels like since last offseason, this team didn't continue that same edge of needing to be relentlessly the best every second of every minute of every day. And maybe Andy Reid turns it on in the playoffs and proves me and any other doubters wrong. But at least during the regular season, they haven't had that same consistent intensity. They've been sloppy, lost four of their last eight. The Bills started their win streak to close out the year by beating this Chiefs team off that Kadarius Tony lining up offsides deal and Buffalo's been finding new ways to win, going to the ground when they need it, going to the air when they do. This game turns into a shootout. I just feel better about backing Josh Allen, given where the teams are at right now. We're taking the Bills to move on. If the Rams had a genuine rest advantage in the wildcard round, the tide certainly flip on them here. San Francisco also got to sit guys in week 18, and then has the benefit of getting to recover from the couch, or more likely the ice bath, before these teams go head-to-head -head for the third time this season. One trend that we see a lot in March Madness is the Cinderella stories happening early, and then a convergence on sort of those top-seeded teams in later rounds. It's been the same case in the NFL playoffs. For as long as I've done this series, the only time a wildcard team has made the Super Bowl was the 2021 Bucks. That was the year with Brady where it took them some time to click, but once they got it together, they were truly the best team in the league. Not quite sure that's the case with the Rams right here. And San Francisco will be my pick to plug forward their NFC Championship berth. The Eagles and Cowboys split the season series, but the more recent matchup a month ago saw Philly lose 33-13 and not score a single touchdown at Dallas. Their challenges right now are all over the place. You lose both coordinators in the offseason, a mass exodus of talent and free agency on the defensive side of the ball. It's put them to the point of performing like a bottom-tier defense of recent, and offensively, they're asking guys to win one-on-one -on -one matchups all the time, which is fine when you have a healthy A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, but isn't necessarily sustainable when the going gets a little bit tougher. I don't mean to be so sour on the Eagles, and I wonder if the narrative will change depending on what happens here in the playoffs, but the truth is the Cowboys are just a better football team right now with more pieces together, and the divisional round is normally where the Dallas Cowboys fall apart this year I think it's going to be different they get their first berth in a conference championship game since 1995 if I had to make a short list of MVP candidates right now it's Lamar Jackson Dak Prescott Josh Allen some people might put Brock Purdy in there as well I don't think he's quite as essential to his team but there you go there's your conference championship quarterbacks and the guys competing for Super Bowl berths we start in the AFC with Ravens-Bills, where the big question for Baltimore is, can they keep it rolling in the postseason? In the regular season since 2018, the Ravens have the second best record in the league. They've been 66-32. and 32. No questions there. But in the playoffs, lost four of their last five. You'll remember in 2019, where they were the number one seed and lost in the divisional round of the Titans. I think the thing that might be a little bit different there is the way that Lamar Jackson's changed his game. 
When he won the MVP last time, it was all legs first, pushing on the ground, setting quarterback rushing records. Now, still uses that mobility, but it's dancing around in the pocket. They've gotten weapons for him. How impressive has it been to have a guy like Zay Flowers and the tight ends? Isaiah Likely stepping in for Mark Andrews has been a boon to that offense as well. Parlay that with four Pro Bowl defenders. This is the best team top to bottom in the AFC. And while the Bills might be able to give them all they can handle, I'm taking Baltimore to punch their first Super Bowl ticket. The 49ers and Cowboys are the two teams with exactly five Super Bowls apiece. But who gets to play for number six? Well, it depends on this game, which I think will be decided with San Francisco's offense against Dallas's defense. The Niners have two areas they can push an edge here. One is the skill position breath. McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk. It's kind of 2019 LSU-esque, and then you throw in Kyle Shanahan coaching, and it's just not fair to deal with. I don't know how Dallas plays the man-to-man -man that they've been leaning so heavily on against it. They had trouble against the Dolphins. Same issue applies here. And then the other thing where Dallas lost to Buffalo is getting gashed in the run game. The Cowboys like to play, and Nickel is their base personnel. It means if you get heavy bodies on the field, hello, Kyle Juszczyk, George Kittle, and co. The Niners can run the ball downhill. If Dak and CD put up 30, 40 points of their own, they might be able to chase in a shootout. I think odds are in this one that San Francisco is going to earn their trip to play for a Lombardi. So here we go. Baltimore and San Francisco. Their colors seem to already match the Super Bowl 58 logo, and my only hope is that the lights stay on in the stadium the entire time. This matchup's particularly fascinating for me because I think these are two of the most well-run franchises in the league right now. Baltimore's analytics-friendly, innovative nature is well-documented. They're always picking breadcrumbs off the ground, getting compensatory picks and whatnot, snagging falling players in the draft. And for San Francisco, the leadership goes top-down from Jed York, who's the youngest owner by far. John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan are steady rocks with a team that seems to always be in the mix no matter who the coordinators are, no matter who the quarterback is, and everything that rotates in and out from that Bay Area squad. And we talk about a mission-driven team. San Francisco, since last year, has been determined to come back to that NFC Championship game, to not have their quarterback get hurt, and to certainly come back and play for a Super Bowl as well. Baltimore equally hungry, and these teams have been the class of each conference. I think deserved to be playing for the Super Bowl. I haven't picked a one seed to make the Super Bowl in the past couple years. That had to change this year. I would love to see Ravens Niners. What would decide this game is the same thing that decided it on Christmas. There's the quarterback nature, and there's the Brock Purdy Rorschach test. He threw four interceptions on that Christmas game. You debate about how much they're attributable to him. If he plays well enough, the Niners can get it done. If he's a class below, they aren't going to hoist the Lombardi. And for my liking, I think when it comes down to it, it's not just the juice that they have, but Brock Purdy does have enough to get it done. The San Francisco 49ers, your Super Bowl 58 champion, and I will award the Super Bowl 58 MVP to Christian McCaffrey, his right-hand man able to do work on the ground, punch it into the end zone, but also be such a great receiving threat, matchup nightmare, a great chess piece for Shanahan to play around with, and we'll take the Niners in a close one to get this Super Bowl. So there you have it, 49ers over Ravens for my 2024 NFL playoff bracket predictions. Please share this video with someone who will appreciate it. Always love the support on the annual upload, especially grateful to be doing it right now after the lights were briefly out on my channel. And make sure you spike a like on this one as well. Subscribe for, well, the annual upload next year, and maybe you'll get two videos in a random year, depending on how things shape up. Let me know in the comments section your wide receiver comp for me, most importantly, but also your Super Bowl matchup and winner as well. Thanks again for tuning in. Good luck to everyone's teams. And let's have some fun football. I'm out. Peace.